Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing well. As uh, as we are speaking, obviously, you know that people in areas of Turkey and Syria, which were hit with this very, very heavy earthquake, uh, are losing their lives. And uh, so far, more than 21,000 people uh, have died unfortunately as a result of this earthquake it is extremely sad it is it is really hard and difficult for me to make this video because imagine these people were alive a few days ago they had dreams they had wishes and they had goals in their lives families but they slept and the earthquake hit in the morning, very early in the morning when everyone was sleeping. And their lives changed forever. So many lives changed forever. And as of now, over 21,000 people uh, are no longer here on this earth. And uh, God knows how many more will be also losing their lives in the coming days so the numbers the numbers don't look good so i just it makes you wonder it makes me wonder i just wanted to share this moment of sadness with all of you of course there's nothing with it um it's just if you are a believer if you truly believe in allah and in the quran you know that everything that happens in the world is by Allah's permission. Especially when this number of people are about to lose their lives overnight. So these are everything, but I mean, especially this. And um, you would know that this is obviously by Allah's permission and Allah allowed this to happen. But I just wanted to share this with you. Um... It's just, I wanted you to see basically where this is. This area where the earthquake hit is technically this area. This is actually uh, one of the most um, religious people in that area. Those who follow, uh, they call themselves Sunni. So uh, they all live here. Um, it, this area of Turkey is more secular, as you know. But this area is actually mostly hardcore Sunni uh, followers that live in this area. And uh, and uh, as you know, obviously, this earthquake hit right there. But this is not the only time. These things have been happening in the Middle East for years. If If you have been following the events, Syria, obviously, as you know, severe... Uh, civil war for the past several years hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives obviously as you know Iraq before that there was a war and after the war there was a civil war and even before that war there was the war between Iran and Iraq and millions of people millions of people during that war lost their lives then Iraq had several other wars Millions of people lost their lives over there in Iraq. Hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives in Syria. Uh, you know about uh, the situation in Palestine and the war that has been going on for years. And uh, many people have lost their lives over there. Um, and also on the Israeli side, the same. And uh, then you come down, obviously you look at Yemen and Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives past um, past seven, eight years in Yemen. And uh, then we come look at Afghanistan. And you all know the situation in Afghanistan. I mean, again, hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives during the wars that have been happening in Afghanistan since the time of Soviet Union. Really, it's one of the richest countries in the world and it has uh, so many minerals. And 
is just it's burning in fire up until recently when Taliban took control and you know the oppression that is happening over there summary killings going on the same with Pakistan, Pakistan obviously you are aware of the bombings in the mosques and how many people have lost their lives over there and then at the border of Pakistan and India um, what we call Kashmir hundreds of thousands of the constant war over there and hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives uh, it's just you look at I don't know if you remember the tsunami in Indonesia where over 300 thousand people's it just majority Muslim country and in and ironically the people who were uh, we consider pagans they didn't die but Muslims were hit those who claim to be Muslims I should say um, technically followers of Akbar they all they so many of them so many of them lost their lives it is really sad I mean when you look at this uh, it is really sad it begs the question I I am sure you have thought about this I am sure you have thought about this it, it impossible if you have not thought about this, but uh, that why, why it's, I mean, it, things happen, catastrophe, disaster happens across the world, in America, in Europe, in Africa, in China, but nothing to this scale, I mean, the scale of events here, in, in Muslim countries, in countries that they call themselves, they believe they are Muslims, the scale of events, the scale of catastrophe, the scale of death and uh, disaster is uh, unbelievable and uh, I, I am sure if if you it begs it begs the question why these countries why the rest of the world is in relative peace compared to Middle East and the countries where um, uh, people believe they follow their religion, of Islam so that is a very good question and I'm sure you have thought about it I have thought about it for years and up until Allah guided me to the answer because the events Allah talks to us through the events of this world Allah talks to us on a daily basis he's sending messages we just have to open our eyes we just have to open our hearts and we just have to hear those we have to hear Allah through his messages that he's sending us day in and day out telling us if he's happy with us or if he's not happy with us in the world Allah is telling us we just have to be willing to listen the question is are we willing to listen I'm going to give you the answer today in the Quran the answer is in the Quran and I'm going to share that with you the first verse the first verse I want to share with you is uh, verse number 31 of chapter 13 in the Quran I'm not gonna read the Arabic please feel free to read the Arabic but I'm just gonna go through the English portion it says, and those who disbelieve do not cease to be struck for what they have done by calamity or it will descend near their home until there comes the promise of Allah so and then it says indeed Allah does not fail in his promise you might tell me you might ask you might be asking yourself what are you talking about this is about those who disbelieve it says those who disbelieve means knocking so earthquake is a qari'ah everyone knows that if you look at the Quran there is actually a surah chapter al qari'ah mal qari'ah but he's talking about the earthquake. So earthquake is a big example of a qara. It's something that knocks the earth. That's a qara. You knock it hard. So what happened in Turkey a few days ago in Turkey and Syria is a qara. So this is this verse is talking about that. 
So the question is, why is it hitting so hard? So many earthquakes. A, a few weeks ago, another earthquake happened in Iran. It's just it's the right and left. Why is Allah knocking that the Middle East so hard? What is the message Allah sending to us? You might be saying, we are not disbelievers. We are believers. We believe. Yes, you believe, but you don't believe in Allah. You believe Allah is Akbar. And please watch those videos. I explain what Akbar is. You read the Quran. While you are reading the Quran, Quran is telling you how to stand your Salah. You disbelieve in that and you stand your Salah in the wrong way. Allah is telling you there's 365 occasion occurrences of the word Yaum. So many verses describing the Quranic calendar. But you still follow the satanic lunar calendar. You read the Quran and you disbelieve in it at the same time. Allah teaches you how to fast in the Quran. Allah gives you example of Maryam. Allah gives you example of of Zechariah but you read those verses but but still you fast wrong Allah names the month of Ramadan in the Quran Ramadan means the month of early rain first rains it's always the first month of fall it has been that way for thousands of years you read the word Ramadan you still disbelieve in it you do a rotating Ramadan that every time it's different. Allah tells you about the punishment of adultery, but you still stone people to death. You cut people's hand. You disbelieve in Allah and his verses and you commit oppression, bloodshed. So what do we expect? We are disbelieving. We are disbelieving in Allah and His words. We read His words and we disbelieve in it. While we are reading His words, while we are reading His books, we are disbelieving in them. The Europeans, the Americans, the Chinese, they don't know Allah's words. Prophet was not sent to them. They don't even believe in our book, in the Quran. They don't know. They have never been warned. They have never been educated on it. They have seen us. They have seen these people, followers of Akbar's, as the example. And who wants to follow that? Nobody. That's why they have an excuse. But what is our excuse? We read the verb, we read the words of Allah and we disbelieve in it while we are reading it. Let's look at another verse from the Quran. And that's, that's another thing. So I'm going to start reading. This is actually a very important verse. Again, verse number 65 of chapter 6 says, He is the one able to send upon you affliction, punishment from above or from beneath. What is the punishment from beneath? It's an earthquake again. From above, it's the war. Hurricane, a lot of these things. Again, I'm not saying these are not happening in other countries. They are happening, but it's just so much milder. Allah has mercy on them. But when it comes to Middle East, Allah hits it hard. Unless you don't believe in Allah. If you don't believe in Allah, then the conversation is over. But if you believe in Allah and you believe in the fact that everything is in the hand of Allah, then you know that this is Allah that is hitting them hard. Why is He hitting them so hard? Because He wants to wake them up. He's telling them, I'm not happy with you. I'm punishing you. Wake up. I'm punishing you. Why am not? Why am I not happy with you? Why am I hitting the religious, those hardcore followers of Akbar, those who believe they're the practicing? Why am I hitting them hard? Because I'm telling them, wake up! You're not in the right path. Allah is telling them, you're not in the right path. 
Your path is wrong. So he's the one who's able to send upon you affliction from above you or from beneath your feet or to confuse you so you become sects and make you taste the violence of one another. These are the wars. These are the wars. That's why if you look at the map, I told you that map is on fire. It's burning. One area stops the other area starts earthquake war civil war is people killing each other this is why and then what does Allah tell us he says look how we are explaining these signs that they might understand what signs the signs that I'm punishing you I'm 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 sending you affliction. I'm punishing you from above and from beneath. And I'm, I will turn you into sects and cause you to, to fight each other. Who is this? Is, this, this, is, this is Allah's verse. Do you believe in the Quran? Do you believe in Allah? This is Allah's verse. He's telling you this is what's happening in Middle East. This verse is happening in Middle East every day. This is Indonesia, when 300,000 people lost their lives. This is Iraq, where millions of people lost their lives. This is Iran and Iraq, Shia Sunni fight, when millions, millions of people lost their lives. This is Syria and civil war. Hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives. This is Yemen. Hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives. This is this earthquake. This is the punishment from beneath. This is the qara. This is the knocker. So this is happening all the time. Why don't we wake up? Until we wake up and we repent from the worship of Akbar, from the worship of Dajjal and the devil, and we repent and we return to Allah and the true religion. My brothers and sisters, these are going to continue. We have to wake up. Let me share with you another verse from the Quran. What does Allah says about true believer? He says, Inna Allah amanu. He says, Allah defends those who truly believe in Him. When is Allah defending us? When is Allah defending the, those who claim to be Muslims? Sunnis, Shias, Islamic sects. Every war they enter, they get defeated. Every war they have, they're the weakest countries in the world, most corrupt countries in the world, poorest countries in the world. Murder, oppression, wars abound, injustice everywhere. Look at the wars that happened between Arabs and the Israelites. Each war, the Arab army was several times bigger, several times better equipped. But in each war, Allah defeated them. Allah fought against them and defeated them. Again, they did in 1967. Egypt did it. They had better equipment. Go read the documentaries. Egyptians had better equipment. A lot more soldiers. Several countries gathered together. Gathered their armies. Several countries went against them. They still got defeated. Why do you think that is? Do you believe in Allah? Allah defeated them. Allah fought against them. Because they are not the followers of them. They don't follow the religion of Allah. They follow the religion of Akbar. Now you go around and say, okay, Jews, Allah is angry on, against the Jews. Or, غضب الله عليهم. But how much more angry Allah is with you? When you say those things, you're condemning yourselves. You who call yourself Sunni 
or you call yourself Shia, it doesn't matter. Worshippers of Akbar, priests of Akbar. When you say those things, you're condemning yourself. If Allah is angry with the Israelites, how much more angry Allah is with you that supports the Israelite and defeats you, fights against you. Allah is fighting against you. Allah and his angels are fighting against you. Do you know why? Because you have abandoned Allah, the source of light, the source of living water, the creator of this world. You have abandoned him. And you follow the religion of the devil. You follow the religion of Akbar, who teaches you how to kill, how to cut heads, how to cut hands, how to oppress 50% of your population, oppress women, how to announce sex jihad. What kind of a religion? The priest of which religion in this world have authorized sex jihad? The religion of Sunnis. Unheard of. Even atheists have not done that. But these people authorize sex jihad in Syria. Is this the religion of God or is this the religion of Satan? My brothers, my sisters, wake up. Wake up and don't worship Akbar, the god of violence, the god of oppression. Repent. Allah is sending you a clear message. Repent and come back to the religion of Allah. Perform your salah correctly. Follow the correct calendar. Worship Allah with a pure heart and a pure mind. And Allah will re return to you. Return to Allah and Allah will return to you. Peace and blessings to all of you.